Peo Cruz was a promising young rugby player from France. He came to New Zealand as an exchange student at Auckland's Long Bay College. On January 8th this year at about 1.30 in the morning, he was one of five passengers in a car driven by 18-year-old Cobus Alberts. Alberts had picked Peo and his friends up from a party. Alberts had been drinking, he was still on his learner's licence, and the Honda Civic he was driving had no warrant and two bald front tyres. He was driving at 78k in a 60k zone when he lost control, hit the curb and overcorrected spinning out on the median strip and swinging the car 180 degrees before slamming the right side of the car into a tree. Peo died at the scene. Today, Alberts was sentenced at the North Shore District Court to home detention for a year. Our Auckland court reporter, Edward Gay, was there and he joins us in the studio now. Hi, Eddie. Hi. Um, there was a packed gallery, was there? There, there was. There were many young people in the, in the mm. gallery, friends of both Peo and Alberts. Also, Peo's New Zealand host family were there. Peo's father, Olivia Cruz, he flew out from France to be here today as well. He read a statement to the court telling of the horror of getting that phone call at, at five in the morning in France that his son had, had been killed on the other side of the world. Uh, he spoke of meeting with the Alberts. He, he flew out here uh, uh, straight after it happened, and he, he met with Alberts after the crash. He'd, he he said he told the court today he got quite emotional at times as well that he expected to be invited into the Alberts family home to to meet with them. Uh, instead, the, this meeting happened in a hotel room. He said that Alberts wanted to read a statement on his phone, and Mr. Cruz said that that statement was far too well written for a 19-year-old. He said it appeared to have been written by a lawyer. He, uh, Mr. Cruz told the court that he had wanted a full and frank conversation with Alberts about what had happened on, on this night, and instead he came away feeling dissatisfied. He said that also Alberts told him he'd only had a couple of beers with with some mates before mm. driving, and, and the court heard today how, in fact, Alberts had drunken eight cans of whiskey premixes. He had a blood alcohol reading of 60 micrograms per 100 mils of blood. The legal limit for under-20s is zero. And Mr. Cruz said he, he'd, he'd wanted this full and frank conversation. The Crown Prosecutor, Joe Murdoch, she said that Alberts should be sent to jail after pleading guilty to these three charges, that's dangerous driving causing death, dangerous driving causing injury, and the drink driving charge. Uh, she said, as well as the aggravating factors that, that you mm -hmm. read in the intro, yeah. another young man in the car, there were four passengers in the back seat, uh, another young man in the back seat, he was left with concussion, whiplash, and a tear in his lung as well from the crash. And Alberts was prepared to go to prison, was he? That's what his lawyer, uh, Mike Lloyd, said. He said that that wouldn't be the appropriate outcome. He said his client was supported in court by a former rugby coach wh who actually has taken him in and uh, into his home. He's given him a job and his roofing business as well. Uh, Mr Lloyd said a sentence of imprisonment would act as a deterrent... Wouldn't, wouldn't, I beg your pardon, act as a deterrent or undo any harm caused by this, but instead it would only damage Alberts' chance at rehabilitation. And Judge Sinclair said no sentence that she passed would bring back Payo. She quoted another victim impact statement that described the crash as a stupid and tragic accident that happened despite these countless media campaigns that we see, yeah. you know, about speeding and, and drink driving. She took time off Alberts' sentence for his early guilty plea, his youth, his previous good character, Judge also accepted Alberts was truly remorseful and quoted him describing, presumably from a letter to the court, describing the trauma of having Peo dying in his arms at the scene. As well as the 12 months home detention, Alberts will carry out 200 hours of community work. He'll pay $3,000 in emotional harm to Peo's family, $1,500 to the, the young man who was injured, his family as well. Now... There is the cloud does not have any silver lining when you've lost a when you've lost a child in these circumstances, right? Full stop. But something rather wonderful has happened, Eddie, has it? Yeah, rather miraculously, really. Mr. Cruz, Peo's father, he's actually organising a rugby match in April between Peo's friends in New Zealand and those in France. It's going to be played in France, um, and it'll take place in April. He's he started up a Facebook page called. Live like Peo, and he's selling rugby balls with that slogan emblazoned on them, the sort of a Kiwi motif and a, and a, and a rooster mm. as well. Uh, and that's to fundraise for this match. 
and the game has support from some huge names. There's photos of Joe Rokothoko holding a ball. Uh, there's there's photos of Dan Carter posing with a ball. Uh, there's a video from Luke McAllister, who, of course, is playing rugby over in France as yeah. well. Uh, and he played for North Harbour. Um, plays the same position that Peo did, second 5-8. Uh, Mr Cruz says he hopes to maintain this link between, essentially between the North Shore and and uh, France, and uh, th- and he's, he says he's now focusing on that. He's uh, The sort of negative part of the saga is over for him. That is a very moving story, Eddie, eh? Thank Edward you. Gay, thank you so much. Really appreciate it.